Hello, uh, good evening, everyone. So I was just trying to wait and see if the live streaming is happening. So in case this public, uh, you know, goes off and somebody notices, please let me know so that I can continue to record. Um, yeah, hopefully it is streaming. Okay, I, I'm just checking. Okay, just give me a second. I hope it is being live stream. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we'll just start off with today's session. So in the last session, um, we looked at the weighted graphs and we also looked at this uh, shortest path problem. Uh, when you just had to compute the shortest path to all the vertices in a graph given a particular source. So you were given, say, you have to start from, say, destination like Chennai, you had to go to all the other cities and you had to compute this uh, path. Now, uh, the next problem is where you have to compute all pair shortest path, like you, know, you want to come up with a Google map or something, right? So, or some kind of tabular uh, representation of between you know, all pairs of uh, cities for some reason, where maybe some uh, Olympics is happening or some event is happening where you want to compute all the uh, smallest, uh, shortest path between each uh, pair of cities involved and all that. So, in such cases, you would need to uh, use this kind of algorithm like the all pairs the shortest path it is called so what would be a simplest thing to do right i'll just uh, share my screen give me a second so given an algorithm for uh, finding the shortest path is the uh, one note visible one note interface visible Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so you're given a source, right? And you have so many uh, paths here. So you have to find the paths to all these. So given an algorithm for this, how will you find the all pair shortest path? Can someone suggest the simplest or straightforward whatever occurs to your mind? Can someone tell me what we can do? It's a simple thing, no? you're given the, you have a black box algorithm which gives you, given a source, you find the shortest path to every other vertex. How do you convert it to all pair shortest path? Sorry, am I not making sense? Repeat it for all the sources. Yeah. This is correct. Yeah. So this first time you make this as the source, next time you make this as a source. So you have a say while loop or for loop or whatever outside. And then you call the black box algorithm, which will compute the uh, single source uh, shortest path to every pair of vertex. So what happens with this kind of an approach, right? So for Dijkstra, we know that doesn't work on negative weights. So if you want to make this work on negative weights, you have to use the Floyd washer, which has a N cube complexity, right? Now, if you add another for loop outside it, right, which is for uh, 0 to n minus 1 or whatever, right? So, this will actually make it a uh, complexity which is n power 4. Can we do better? So, that is what we are doing using the Floyd washer. Is this clear? The motivation to do the uh, this uh, modified Floyd washer algorithm, why are we not using the straightforward uh, uh, single source shortest path? Clear, right? Is it clear? Okay. Okay, fine. I, I'll just go ahead. Okay. So what, uh, I mean, if you're just adding another for loop and you are actually trying to iterate it from every other, uh, every vertex, you're actually trying to execute the single source shortest path, it will result in a O of uh, n power 4. And as you would have seen in the first or second week, right, I mean, as the polynomial power keeps increasing, it the, makes drastically um, big difference when it comes to higher values of n. So can we bring it, if we can bring it at least one notch lower, right, from n power 4 to n power 3, then we'll get a considerable, considerable improvement. So in this floyd washell algorithm, right, so this is the floyd washell algorithm. Okay. This is the name of the algorithm. So here, there is this uh, 
property of transitive closure of a graph. So not sure how many of you have uh, listened to this uh, lecture on transitive closure of graph in CT. Have you watched that lecture? Any of you have watched the transitive closure? Yeah. Sorry, somebody has raised a hand or does someone want to say something, raise the hand or anything? No? Okay. Fine. Anyway. So um, so when you are computing the transitive closure of a graph, eventually I gave a small example last time, like by matrix multiplication, you actually compute the so given the uh, first matrix, like the distance matrix, right? So you have the zero. 1, 2, 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3. And you have some adjacency matrix value. Say for all this, you have 0. And somewhere you have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, whatever. And here, suppose it's 0. I mean, I'm just putting some random. So if you compute the A into A, right, you will get a matrix where you will have some other set of non zero values, sorry, non values which are, yeah, non zero values. And that will actually give you. So whenever you are putting, say, this is, suppose you say this is A, matrix A. Then you compute a squared, which is by matrix multiplication, this one. And then in A2, wherever you have a non-zero value, that is a uh, distance of length. That is like uh, you have a path which is of this length, say path 2, which will go through two vertices. Okay, So that is the idea of computing the matrix, uh, I mean the transitive closure of a graph by going through, say, you take from, you compute the, you, okay, you, you check like whether when you want to go from say 0 to 1, you see whether there is direct path, yes. Then there is this another path if you, I mean, so here the direction is not correct, so it probably doesn't make sense. But if you have another path like this, is there a shorter path? So the idea of the transitive closure, you are actually extracting from the idea of transitive closure. In the floyd walsh warshall algorithm, all that you're doing, the main thing that you have to understand is the shortest path, right? So as I said, A and A squared and all that. No? So you just assume that this is, say, level 1 or something, okay? In this, you want to find the shortest path from, say, vertex I to J. Then what you're going to do is you are looking at the minimum of the shortest path that goes through this, this, uh, you know, superscripts, I will explain it to you. You just keep this in mind so that it kind of makes it easy for you. I minus K1 plus, rather this should be K, and this should be K minus one, okay? It's be K minus one, okay? K minus one to J. So all that you're saying is, suppose I want to go from I to J. There is one path which is say of weight W1, okay, the total length of the path is. There is another path which goes from I to K and K to J. And this is say W2, W3. And what you are going to take is the minimum of W1, comma, W2 plus W3. This is the, this is what the floyd washell algorithm is going to compute for every possible pair of vertices. So how you do it is you iteratively compute what happens if there was a path that goes through vertex 0. Next, you see what happens if there is a path that goes through 1. Next, you see what if there was a path that goes through 2. Right. So you iteratively build this matrix and by the time you reach the last vertex, the nth vertex, you would have found out all the shortest paths. Because any longest path, right, any longest shortest path, I mean, when I, what, what, what I mean by longest shortest path is that the largest path that you can have in any, uh, you know, n, n vertex graph is of size n minus 1, right, that you can only have as many as n minus 1 inches, right. So ultimately, after the nth iteration, what you get will be the shortest path for because at every point, see, at every iteration, the first one, you will check what happens if 0 was the par part of this uh, 0. If I can go from, say, one vertex to another via 0, what happens? Then this what happens? Then this what happens, etc., etc. Got it, right? So that is how you iteratively build the matrix. 
Ma'am, could you explain that SP IJ K minus one and then I K minus one K minus? I mean, how yeah, does it yeah, come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. And uh, uh, they are using columns and rows, madam. Why it is so? We can directly use columns. Seven by seven are this. Sorry. Okay, these are directed graphs, so rows and columns will be different. Uh, no, uh, the square matrix will only be square matrix, right? This is what you're asking, right? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, this is it's it's the same, but I I don't think it differs when you put it rows here. But I think it is the same. It's just to distinguish logically is my understanding because you're anyway not updating and whatever calls and rows are like it's both are coming as the size value, right? In the code, if you see the like whatever size you are passing, okay, this is not the one. So the size that you're passing to the matrix, right? Both are the value size. So whatever you are receiving here, the rows and columns, which is the W match shape from the in NumPy, right? That is both are same dimension only. So it doesn't really matter. And you are anyway not editing the calls or rows inside, but it makes a logical in the sense that it is easier to understand the code that way. That is my understanding. Okay. okay. Have you tried changing it to rows? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, after changing also, I got the same answer. Yeah, That's exactly. It. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't matter really. Yeah. Because it's a square matrix anyway. Even for directed graph, it is a square matrix. Only thing the entries will be zero or one, depending on whether there is an edge or forward edge or backward edge. Okay. So somebody was asking, like, what is the meaning of this, right? So, see, this this is something that you have to keep in mind. Okay. This is the I to J, right? And then you have from now. What I am trying to do is, first I am trying to see what happens if it goes through one particular vertex, right? The next iteration, I am going to see what happens if it goes through a particular iteration. But again, see, suppose I want to go from, say, 2 to 3. Don't look at this picture. I am just saying some uh, uh, something, I mean, something, some example which you can understand. Now I can go from 2 to 4 and 4 to 3. This 4 to 3... It is possible that I can go from 4 to 1 and then 1 to 3. Because what I am going to do is I am going to compute SP0 first, then SP1 for next, then SP2 first. So I would have already computed 1 by the time I reach 4. Right? So if I am going through 1 for 4 to 3, right? then 2 to 4. So directly if there is an edge from 4 to 3. And what happens if I go from 4 to 1 to 3? That is what I am computing. So in SP1, I have already computed all these. And that is actually taken to SP2 unless there is a better path. And then SP3 also has that unless there is a better path. So when you're computing SP4, you're actually looking at what is there in SP3. That is what I mean by here it is K and here it is K minus 1. Now for I to J, um, okay, I think I had written something wrong, right? Just give me a second. Here you have to, the minimum has something else also, right? It's not just, I'll write it more clearly, sir. So was that the confusion because I had written it wrongly or uh, you... No, ma'am, I in general have a confusion about this, ma'am. Okay, okay, I will show you. Ma'am, you so, could, uh, yeah. we, we could see through the code also, the one that you've pasted here. Yeah, yeah, that I will come to that. But see, seeing so many things, you know, it can be confusing for people. That's why yeah, I was trying yeah. to simplify it. Yeah, so you have a matrix which is... Uh, SP is for shortest path, okay? You're calculating this matrix, which is this weighted matrix that we have, right? 0, yes, 1, 2, 3. So yes. if there is an edge, you put the edge weight here. Otherwise, you put the infinity. So this is the SP0. That is the starting point. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, that's your starting point. Now you calculate from... Um, yeah, now you calculate from, say, you want to compute what happens if vertex 4 is there, okay? SP, SP4 is what you want to compute, okay? From, say, vertex um, 2 to 3. You want to go from 2 to 3. What happens if vertex 4 is included in that path? That's what this means, okay? Now, I have already computed it for vertex 3. Which one? This distance, 2 to 3, okay? Because I am actually building it from... SP0, so SP0 are the starting points. So 0, don't misunderstand it with this vertex. The first starting point is the our, our adjacency matrix, simple. Adjacency matrix for the 
weighted uh, weighted graphs okay the sp0 this one will be what happens if you had vertex 0 in the path okay then you have vertex what happens if vertex 1 is in the path then you compute what happens if vertex this i will tell you how you are computing that's a different thing what i'm trying to say the if you are able to understand this statement then it is very easy to understand the rest of the things okay what you're going to do is so okay i have already pre-computed something which is in sp3 i have computed what is for two 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 and three right now i want to compute for sp4 and two to three can anything get better if the four is if i can go through a path which is four so i and j is two and three now i'm checking whether i can go through four and reach here and does this make it any better whether the w2 plus w3 is anyway better than w1 so for that what i'm going to say is min of okay sp3 of 2 comma 3 right that is i get it from the previous metrics previous computed metrics that is what no. is shown here so in this k i have put it as index so yeah. that you can understand it okay not, it, not, it, not the index the superscript, superscript this yeah. k is here okay so yeah. the previous iteration whatever metrics you have computed from that you look at the two three okay i have already computed some minimum distance from the earlier iterations is this better than what i'm going to compute now which is i'm going to see sp3 2 comma 4 plus sp3 4 comma 3. Um, sorry to interrupt ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Power is, uh, I remember yesterday I told like a length, right? Is it the no, no, that is Yeah, that is the matrix transitive That's closure perfect. and matrix. This is different. This is actually, you have to understand it's slightly different. I okay. have put this buffer just to take the third dimension because the third dimension can be a little confusing for some people. That's why okay. I thought this is the matrix, some first matrix computed and the previous, like what if this edge is there in the path? What if this edge is there in the path, right? Okay. okay. Yes, ma'am. This is why I'm clear with clear no so yeah. that's what so see oh, 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 this picture always remember it okay this is i j and there is a k in between and i want to see whether this is any better for that i am taking this part and i've already calculated i j from some earlier competition like i go, saw what happens if it goes through one two three etc and i'm taking the latest one which is the latest updated value so i'm taking comparing this and the new value which i can take from sp3 and then if it is better I will replace this one. I will uh, update the uh, distance from 2 to 3 as this. That means now the shortest path will be it is better that you go through 4 rather than the taking the direct edge from 2 to 3. That's what this means. Yeah. Got it, no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's how you compute this matrix. Okay. Now we will do some hand running for this state. But it is actually, see, it's unlike the diagstras in this one. This is slightly difficult because you have uh, such a 6 by 6 matrix and you have to compute the. So I will just try it for one or two iterations. Then, um, see, as soon as long as you understand what I'm trying to explain in this step, right? Sorry. In this step, there is, it is only a matter of just computing that matrix after matrix after matrix. Okay. So I'll just. Uh... And we only need to look at uh, the direct connection and connection by one vertex. No, no, that's what I'm saying. See, when it comes to higher orders, right, you have to see there may be a better value previously, right? So you have to take the. So I, I'll just show you maybe one example. So what I'm saying is, like, say you are. I, I told you the example, right? So you are. You want to go from say two to three. Okay, and so you have a path from 2 to 4 and 4 to 3. But 4 to 3 might be a better option like this. Right, but this you would have computed in that previous matrix is what I'm saying. So there was a direct edge 4 to 3 and there is a path 4, 1, 3. Correct. This you would have computed in SP1 because when you are going via SP1, so you would have already computed this and the latest will be there in the last one. You understand that? Yes, there can be cases that we have not computed it yet. Cases. Yeah, it could be something bigger also. Like, um, so suppose you had say 2 to 5 uh, or maybe 5 to 6 or something. Then it could be 5 to um, 
3 and 3 to 6 and 3 to 6 could be going through 3 to 1 and all that, right? This is also possible. But what I'm saying is because these intermediate vertices that SP power whatever, right? The smaller value is actually computed earlier. We already have this calculated somewhere in kept, so it will should be the minimum. That's what I mean. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Ma'am, I just wanted to ask. Yeah. Like, how is this different from the transitive closure? Like, uh, is it because that the previous, only the one vertex is new added? Is that the only thing that's different? No, transitive, see, computing this is, so, um, how is this different from transitive closure is what you're asking. So the idea of transitive closure, right, that is for computing what is known as a transitive closure of graphs. So there you are actually adapting that idea to find the shortest path. So this algorithm, I think uh, the transitive closure algorithm was given by uh, Warshall, right? And then Floyd adapted it for finding the shortest paths. So it is not exactly the algorithm to find the transitive closure that we are using here. Okay, it's a modified version. We are using the idea of that to do this. Okay. Okay, yeah. So the uh, transitive closure idea is just to give you an idea about what... So the small example that I demonstrated last time actually showed you, you can actually use the matrix multiplication to compute the path of two, right? So, yeah, I mean, you can actually look at it parallelly, but the thing is, like, if we have to explain a lot, then... We have to, we'll take a longer time. So maybe we should have some other session or something. But from the course, maybe evaluation perspective or something, that's just for your understanding. So I'm not going in. Okay. But Floyd Marshall is very important because practical scenarios, there may be many cases where you have to use some modified version of the Floyd Marshall algorithm to solve a given problem. Okay. So the algorithm is important. This code is important. You're getting it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's probably fine. Okay. So... So this is going to be a pretty heavy computation. Okay, zero one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, five. Okay. We just do this as the Can you tell me what is the starting straight lines are? Okay, just assume that these are my straight lines. Okay. So this actually the diagonal elements will be zero by default, right? This is clear, no? Yeah. Now this is the starting matrix. So what will it be? If you want to go from zero to one, it will be four. Zero to two, it will be two. This is just the adjacency matrix. Okay. 0 to 3 is infinity, 0 to 4 is 5 is infinity, 1 to 0 is Z infinity, 1 to 2 is minus 5, right? Please correct me if I am wrong, okay? I'm just doing 1 to 3 is 5, 1 to 4. So, I mean, SP0, would these be there? I mean... No, no, actually SP0, okay. SP0 is the one which will go through zero vertex. Now I'm actually starting with the first one, something like some starting SP minus one or whatever, like that. Just the start, first start, just in same matrix, right? You're not going through any vertex. It's just the okay. edges. Okay. Okay. It's not an SP zero, right? No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that probably doesn't make sense. Yeah. So two to zero, that is nothing. Two to one. Two, mm -hmm. ma'am? Yeah. Ma'am, uh, can, uh, can you uh, tell me uh, what is the length of the third dimension of uh, this SP matrix? Like, which is storing the value of K? This one, right? 1, 2, calls plus 1, right? That's the range of K, right? Okay, so the range is telling the possible values. Is, is it that? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I did not understand. What is it? Range is telling? Like, like... I'm not getting uh, like uh, the third dimension, which is storing the value of K. So how it's actually storing within the SP matrix, like uh, K is uh, some kind of a list within the SP matrix, which are having on its length. So what, are you asking what is the entry of SP? One entry in SP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you explain it? like? Yeah, that's what I said by SP3 uh, and all that. No? This is what I said, right? Like I so, comma uh, J. Okay, and where the value of K will get stored? 
no where does the value of i and j get stored no no like value of k mm -hmm. like within the sp matrix you have written three dimensions ha huh. i j k okay so i'm asking like uh, within the k uh, k dimension uh, okay. like what will be the length of the third dimension like length of the list that's um, so uh, i to be very honest i'm not getting the question so if your doubt is like okay i know i is ranging from rows and j is ranging from columns what does this k is doing right so you are yeah. saying like okay i is for um, so okay so i i I, like, mean, i understand like you when it, this is the source and this is the destination that's what you mean right this is the destination you know that what happens to k right yeah That's what you mean. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, have you watched the lectures? Yeah, but I couldn't get it. Like, yeah. Uh, so, this is what Sir was saying. That something like this. This is the third dimension he was talking about. See, this is the first when k equal to zero, k equal to one, k equal to two. Sorry, k is starting from etc. This is okay. Okay, like that. Uh, this is okay, but like uh, k is itself a list. So well, where it will get stored within the SP matrix? Why do you say k is a list? K is only an iterator, just like uh, i and j, right? Oh, okay. So we will keep track the value of k within uh, some other variable. K is a variable which is an integer value, right? Okay. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, sorry. All the matrices that we get after multiplying with each other are stacked on one one top of other, and k will start with the first matrix. Then matrix multiplied, then k value will be one. Then again multiplied with second matrix, that matrix will k value will be two. That's how I thought sir was explaining. Miss. The, all the n minus one uh, multiplications are happening in matrices, na? Uh, so where is matrix multiplication coming here? Sorry, I means. Uh, 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 See, this this formula does not have the matrix multiplication in it, right? Is that correct? Or am I missing something? Let me just check if. Is uh, no, ma'am. It doesn't have matrix multiplication. Yeah, it doesn't have no. So matrix multiplication was more for us to understand the transitive closure and right. Uh, okay. So what is? Can you can you tell me? Is that your doubt or are you explaining something? Can you make it? Yes, uh, I, I thought I understood like that. Is the k value? <coughs> k value is a progressive matrix multiplication of. Each uh, adjacent matrix we got. Means first okay. uh, first matrix will be k is equal to zero. Second matrix will be k is equal to one and. Yeah, that's what I said. No, this is the k equal to one, k equal to two, k equal yes. to three, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. This is a three-dimensional matrix. That's uh -huh. the dimension here. Yes, yes. That's, that's what we are showing here. This is a three-dimension matrix. Yeah. So what I thought the other person I do I didn't catch his name but what I I was trying to tell him like this is a two that's why I went with this it's sometimes it's very difficult to visualize a third dimension right that's why I started off with this formula but now I said S S P R K where the superscript indicates the level the next level or whatever you're trying to do in that you are actually going from if you want to go from I to G what happens if this matrix is far on the path. So that's all. What this third third dimension means? What if this vertex is there in the path? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, I have to. Okay. So three to zero. There is sing. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay, three to zero. I have infinity. 
I'm really sorry for my handwriting. I cannot help me better. Yeah. So uh, three to one, there is nothing. Four to one, there is nothing. So we have only from five to five doesn't have anything. So everything is kind of pretty. So this is zero. Zero to this thing to this thing, zero itself. Then you have um, sorry, one second. So from one vertex to everything is initialized to zero infinity, right? Just keep it. There is no zero, right? Okay. We have initialized to zero and only those values all call zero. So everything you are setting to infinity. Right? Right, so this is all infinity minus not reach from doesn't make sense to do this. Okay, so two to four is you have ten, two to five is there's nothing, three to two is nothing, four to two, three to four is two, four to three is infinity, three to five is. 6 and 4 to 5 is 5. Okay. So let me just mark these values. Yeah. Why yeah. aren't we marking the diagonal elements as 0? So that was a little confusion I also had whether we initialize it with 0 or infinity. But I guess. Um, so do you think we should initialize it with 0 yeah. or uh, infinity? I think it should be 0 because the distance from one node to the node itself is zero. But we What's don't it? have an edge, no? We don't have an edge. Uh, yeah. The problem is when yeah. you go to SP1, SP2, if there is a cycle and it comes back to that edge, then it wouldn't update because zero is the minimum value. So suppose if I go from zero to one, one to two, and come back to zero, if there is an edge like that, then if we put a zero initially, probably I think, I mean, that's what is my understanding, it wouldn't update. If you put that, it as that, infinity or zero, we should put it as infinity. If you put it as zero, if you yeah, put it as zero, zero will be a problem, is what you're saying. Yeah, right? yeah. But there yes. could be the negative values there itself. Yeah, it would update only if there is a negative problem. If if it is a negative cycle, but that won't happen because we will yeah. not. Work Let with me. Uh, we can just see the code what we have here, right? Yeah. Just give me a second. Uh, we are initializing. This is infinity, we have zeros. Then for everything, we are setting it to infinity, right? Yes, we are. Correct, no? Yes. Yes, yes. So according to the code, it should be infinity. Yeah. It is infinity. So see, the thing is whether you can reach zero from zero itself, right? That's the question. Can you reach? This is a reachability question, right? Whether you can reach. Why are we putting infinity? Infinity in directed graphs mean that you are you cannot reach from one node to another, right? That's the idea of zero. So if you had a node like this, then I understand. But if you don't have, how do you reach from zero to zero? Uh, yeah, I think it should be infinity. Yeah. We'll see, maybe one example if we try, no, we'll understand it, okay? Okay? Okay, so I have one more confusion here. Maybe we'll just look at it as it, as it comes, okay? So the first, as I mentioned, right? I mean, so we are actually starting with SP1, not SP0. So let me just check what happens if you assume this to be zero in the sense that Instead of going through the vertex zero, we just assume this is the starting vertex. And then we are only going to try from one onwards. Okay, let us just try it this way. Let us see what happens. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know who was asking. What, I mean, you asked whether SP0 is whether it is going through zero or not, right? But uh, we are actually starting the K from one. You can see that, no? So this value, right? This is actually we are starting from zero. So how does this adjust? We will see when we see this example. Okay. So, uh, ma'am, in, in the lecture, it said that SP0 is I to J and uh, I to 0 and J. So, it includes both those edges. I to 0 and 0 to J, is it? 
yeah i to j and i to 0 to j since your 0 doesn't have any like incoming so we can ignore that part yeah in this graph it doesn't have but in general if this has an incoming edge then uh, we would still compute we if this doesn't work no then in this case you have to put it as zero see this graph is correct there is no in degree there is no node coming inside it right so you cannot have an edge which goes through zero that is not possible correct in this case it's not oh. possible but the algorithm should not be depend on the graph right but if you put uh, k as one so in the the last code line it's sp ij k minus 1 that becomes zero minimum of uh, ij zero no no i understand that see what does this sp ij k mean what we said is you want to go from i to j what if there is a node which is k right so are we saying k is the node zero here when i am saying ij zero i am i saying the path from i to j when it goes through zero is that the case or is this the initial matrix actually that is what my understanding was k was a vertex so if you put k is equal to 2 you can pass through 0 1 and uh, like that so k was a vertex as k is a vertex k is a vertex there is no confusion from one onwards it's clear yeah, so what is it the case with zero is the doubtful case see what does sp0 indicate whether it indicates a starting matrix the first adjacency matrix that we start off with or does it mean that the path that go through the vertex zero and in this case it so happens that the in degree is zero so it it might as well mean that it is the same starting matrix right correct so it it included both so that is what what uh, came from the lecture uh, but we can continue with and we can see later. yeah yeah that's what i was thinking yeah, uh, yeah. so we, we just looked at the i just looked at this and i thought i understood but maybe you know when when we when you run it actually you will realize like what the problem is okay so let us just try to update the matrix okay so let us keep the formula here sp from i comma j is equal to min of sp from i comma so this is k and this is k minus 1 this is also k minus 1 right plus sp k minus 1 of k minus 1 comma j comma sp k minus 1 of whatever symbol i comma j the square matrix the square bracket okay let's keep it here okay now let us just do one iteration and see okay 0 1 2 3 4 5 I should have taken a simpler graph. Okay. Yeah, zero to zero, we'll just update everything as infinity. All the diagonal elements are infinity. Okay. What happens if you want to go from zero to one? So zero to one, that means um, you are now going to compute SP one. Okay. SP one zero one. Right. You have to take min of okay, SP zero. From zero to one, as yes, SP zero of hmm sorry zero to zero and zero comma one comma SP zero of zero comma one. Is this correct? So this is the my k minus one. This is my k minus one. This is my k minus one. And this is my I N J, correct? No. Is this correct? Okay, I'm assuming it is correct. So here, what happens is you got the this is S P in zero zero. You got it as infinity plus whatever is going to be definitely larger than this, where S P zero of zero one is four, right? So this is your four. So whichever is the minimum, you will take four. So you will again update it as zero one is four. Let us see where the distance will reduce if you go from zero one and one two, right? Okay. Let us see what happens if you go to zero to two. Hmm? So zero to two, when you want to go SP one. So why is it still one? We are computing SP one only here, right? This is SP one that we are computing. Okay, from SP zero, which means that what happens if you go through the vertex one, right? So you have SP one and you want to go from zero to. 
So this is going to be minimum of SP0 of 0, 2, right? Plus SP0 of 0, 1 plus SP0 of 1, 2. Is this clear for everyone? When I want to no ma'am. No? Okay. So this yeah, is, no, yeah, you just keep in mind this is k. Okay. This is your k minus one. This is simply blind substitution only. Okay. So this is no, there, there's no comma in second equation. There should be a comma. Oh, right? no, no, no. This should be comma. Okay. Correct, no? I have to write it neatly. Are you able to see this? What I'm written, uh, what I've written here? Maybe I'll write it more clearly. Basically. Erase this. Write it again. Sorry. So anyway, I won't be able to compute the full matrix. I'm just showing you where there is going to be a change here. Okay, zero to two. This is zero to two. So in our earlier matrix, this is the value, right? Two. Here we are going to see that. Let us see if the zero to two changes. If we take SP1. What does SP1 symbolically mean? SP1 symbolically means if I have to go from 0 to 2, so I am going from I to J and there is a K here. Okay. Some part K. I and J. So here my I is 0, J is 2 and K is 1. Why is K 1? I am going to compute. This is the SP power K. Got it, no? So the formula is SP I J K. I'm going to take SPIJ K minus 1, which is min of right SP0, which is K minus 1. 0 is K minus 1. Our K is 1. So SP K minus 1 of 0, 2. That is the pre computed Like we already computed some minimum. And I'm going to compare it with what happens if it goes through the vertex 1. Right. So, so. Let me just see. Okay. SP zero of zero comma one. So this should have been I comma K and K. Was my understanding. Let me see. Okay. Just uh, yeah. Now, what happens if it is 0, 2? Okay. What is SP 0, 2? SP 0, 2 is 2 here. Right. What is SP 0, 0, 1? SP 0, 0, 1 is 4 plus SP 0, 1, 2. What is SP 0, 1, 2? Which is minus 5. So, this becomes minus 1. Now, I'm going to update SP 1 of 0, 2 as minus 1. Oh, my confusion is uh, why is this k minus 1, right? Um, it should be i, k and k, j. No? So this is k minus 1. That is correct. This is correct. This should be k is what I thought. Can anyone clarify? Can anyone, does anyone understand why am I missing out something? Who have understood uh, yeah. the algorithm, right? Yeah. As per uh, your logic, madam, that uh, k is actually... It, it should be, uh, so this should be 0, 0 and then it, that that's what it should update, right? The 0, 0. It should have been 0, 0 and then 0, 2, right? Yeah. But that's not correct. No? Okay, 0, 2 is already 2. And next iteration, when you come, SP2, but you are not going to work. Right? So there is some confusion in that. So this is uh, the Floyd Washell, uh, the, the formula that I had written, right, which is SPK of I, comma J, SP. K minus 1 of the previous iteration, whatever you have, plus, sorry, minimum of this or the K minus 1, I comma K, 
and sp k minus 1 k comma j this is my understanding so i don't know why it is mixed up just give me a second okay let me just check and get back to you i don't want to tell you the wrong thing Just give me a second. Hello. Am I audible? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Ma so I just had one doubt regarding this. So here we are actually my understanding with respect to the uh, Floyd Warshall algorithm, right? It was that you compute mm -hmm. the. I'll just write the formula again. Okay, just give me a second. Mm -hmm. So you calculate the next matrix, okay, SP1. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. So if you want to go from say I to J or SPK, whatever, right? This is yeah. equal to minimum of, right? SP K minus 1 mm -hmm. I comma J. Yeah, okay. Plus, uh, sorry, comma. No, no. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, fine, fine. Or then you have SP mm -hmm. K minus 1 i to k plus sp k minus 1 k to j right yeah it is correct but this here we are writing it as k minus 1 that was confusing for me see here we are computing k minus 1 actually ma'am here we are taking a loop from 1 for but k that is okay from... what i'm saying is if we are finding it for k then we have to see what it was in the previous uh, matrix right that sum we can take, like for k minus one. No? This should be k minus. No, this this is this should be k only, not k minus one. Is what my understanding is. That k and that k are different, ma'am. Yeah. So actually, this implementation is a little bit dif uh, different. Okay. So here, actually, we are taking this k minus one. Uh, actually, it is representing a node, and uh, for so for example, for the first loop, we are starting from the uh, one uh, one. So but but our index is starting from zero. 
vertex index is starting from zero. So the first yes. matrix that we start is SP zero, right? Zero, zero. Uh, that is, matrix, that, is, that the is the last. That is the last index representing k minus one. So here you can see i comma k minus one. So second k minus one is uh, representing to node, and third k minus one is representing to the previous matrix. Correct. That is fine. That is correct. Yeah, that's hmm. correct. But both so actually, actually in the yeah. in the first case actually this we are taking this k minus one uh, because we are starting from uh, we are starting loop from one. So we are actually uh, considering the node uh, index zero. So zero node. Okay, so, that so logically, this. logically, what you mean by SP i j k is what is the shortest distance from i to j if you're going through vertex k? Is that correct? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here also that is what it means, right? If you're going from i to k minus one, sorry, i to k minus one through k minus one, does it make sense? Uh, so if you, so for you can change a little bit in the outer loop, so you can start from the zero and uh, just re if reduce by zero here, calls. Yeah. Read, uh, two calls, two calls, C O L S. Huh. Okay, and then you can remove this minus one. For only one of them, this one only. Yeah, only one of them. Yeah. But still, that will be correct, is what you're saying, is it? Okay. Yeah, it, it will work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, according to this, uh, I think your form formula. That's correct. So, that's correct. Yeah. yeah according correct. to that formula, is correct. This is K K and this is K. So mm -hmm. I think the problem was the starting of one, right? Okay. That's but ma'am, then yeah. the next K minus one, what would that be then? That will be minus one, right? No, no, not I, minus I, one. I, no, we started K with one because if we go to, if we started off with SP zero, right? See, the problem mm -hmm. is going to happen if it was zero here. Then this will be minus one. So that's a problem, right? Sorry, they're not this one. This will be minus one. Right, right. Which is not there. That's why we started with one. Mm. But logically, okay. if you put start from zero, then this is correct. Yeah. So okay. this is only for the sake of implementation that we have modified it this way. Ideally, what you have to understand when you have to compute the next matrix, right? You can just use this i comma k. When you're running this, you can yeah, use this. You. But because yeah. for implementation, the minus one is not defined, you can actually yeah. start with the one and then it will still go through. Okay. Okay, you can just give it a try. I'm not sure whether I'm making sense, but uh, yeah, you can just give it a try. I think it has to do with the implementation. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, we just so general logically in algorithm actually we consider that uh, uh, SP zero is the original matrix, and then when we are implementing this algorithm, so zero we uh -huh. cannot take. So because it, because it means it's accepted. going through vertex zero, right? That's the yes, matrix. yes, yes. So because of that, we, uh, yeah, this implement got modification is there. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Atul. Okay, yeah. yeah. So for now, yeah. The, okay, so I just I was just demonstrating. So this two, sorry, this two, whatever we had here, right? From zero to, yeah, Atul. I think uh, you can drop off. Sorry to trouble you. Okay, if you want to. I mean, you can stay on, of course. But yeah, thank you, thank you very much. So zero to two is here, no? So that we have actually modified to zero to one using this one, because. Now you are checking what happens if you want to go from 0 to 2. What happens if there is an intermediate vertex which is k, which is the 1. This is the i and this is the j. What happens if this is 1? And then because this has a negative weight, right, it gets updated as minus 1. Okay. So I'm not computing the full matrix. I'm just demonstrating how this formula works and when why this changes from 2 to 1 here. That way, by the time you finish the full all the n minus so sp uh, and this is going till this one right so sp and plus one if you go till that the final one whatever you compute it goes through even the last vertex and that you compute it then you get the shortest path between every pair because in this matrix you're actually you are just updating the matrix right so you have every pair updated in every iteration right now in every iteration in the sense every iteration of the for loop you are actually updating these right so uh, unlike the a single path shortest uh, uh, a single single so shortest path algorithm this is actually making use of what is known as sub problems so you have the this sp i comma i comma k and sp k comma j you say that these are sub problems of this given big problem and there will be some overlapping situations also so if you want to compute from say 0 to 2 and then you will you make use of 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 
same time if you want to make use of say 3 to 2 then also you can make use of 3 to 1 and 1 to 2 so that 1 to 2 problem is kind of a common sub problem which you have already computed and kept it in your matrix it's just a lookup that you're going to do in that in that table you've already computed and kept it you're just going to do a lookup so this is kind of you know an advanced concept which you will learn later and they can i mean you don't have to think about it i'm just mentioning so you notice that we have already pre-computed certain values of these smaller problems, which you're just reusing when you are using certain cases of certain higher values of k. So you are not recomputing this whole thing again, is what I'm saying. Every time you do that, this is not recursion kind of. This is actually stored somewhere in the table, and you're just making a lookup, you're just extracting the data from there and just plugging it in this formula. Okay, so that is just something you just keep in your mind in later weeks when we go to the advanced stuff. You know, pro programming paradigms, this will kind of start making sense. Okay. So this is a quick uh, go through of the um, floyd Washell algorithm. I have the copy the code also here. So let me just clear the screen. Okay. So Floyd Washell actually it is running on the directed graph. So you have only one sided edges and I have not added the weights for the other direction as you can see. So this 360 is actually what is 360, 361, these higher values, right? These are for the, uh, this is standing for the infinity, okay? Because it, what it basically means is that it is not reachable. Okay, these values are not reachable and that's what it is showing there. Okay, now um, so, uh, one clarity. So, yeah. in the Floyd Washell algorithm, we are updating from the previous matrix only if the current value is greater than that. Otherwise, we are uh, putting the same value. Yeah, right? the newly computed value is smaller. That's why we take the so min. matrix from the previous one if it is only this less is min. than the previous yeah. matrix, right? This is min, min, this min function. Yeah, we are updating the new matrix. Otherwise, the correct. values stay the same. Right? Correct, correct. We don't update it. See, for in, in this four, no, this value of four. It just yeah. remained the same here also, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, minus one we updated because we saw that when you looked at both the uh, parts, the other part. yeah, one yeah. was two and the other was minus one, so we updated it with minus so one. So we are checking basically whether there is any path through the other vertex which can be less than the correct, correct. Is in the map. So, so in this graph also, right, you can clearly see, right? zero yeah. to zero to two via two is uh, less compared to uh, no via one, one is this one. This Sorry, is less. Yeah. One this is, is lesser than this one. Yeah. Okay. That is what we are going to do. Okay. Yeah. So for, you can take a smaller graph, maybe a uh, four node graph or something and just do one hand, right? Using this. So this is the main step of this algorithm. If you are able to compute this iteratively, basically that is all what you need to know about this algorithm. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now we go to the spanning trees. Okay, otherwise I am just rushing through because otherwise we won't be able to finish spanning tree today also. And Atul will, <laughs> yeah, I will have to answer Atul. Okay, so we'll just go to uh, spanning trees. Yeah. So, um, uh, okay. So what was I telling you about the spanning trees last time, right? So let us just look at this graph. The idea is you want to find a Tree. So I said tree is nothing but a connected a cyclic graph. Okay. So if this graph, whatever is my input graph, if this is a connected graph, then I can clearly find out a tree from that because it's already connected. So for any given graph, I can come up with a tree for that. Simply do the BFS on that graph. Now what you get is a BFS tree. That's a tree, right? So if you want to find the shortest path or the tree with the, uh, like you want, you have a, uh, okay, maybe I, I don't want to go. To, okay, I'll tell you so. A tree is nothing but you remove all the cycles in the graph and still the graph has to remain connected. That is what the spanning tree is. So if you're simply given a graph, which is not weighted okay if you want to come make a spanning tree we call a spanning tree then it is actually a tree that has all the vertices in the graph given graph but does not have any cycles 
So this given graph has number of spanning trees. Say for instance, this is one spanning tree of the graph, right? Correct, no? The other one is, are you able to understand what spanning tree is? This is two, zero, yeah, three, one, right? This is another spanning tree of the graph. Or maybe it is just two spanning trees, I think, yeah. So this has only uh, two spanning trees. By removing, first you remove this edge, right? And the second case, you remove this edge. So this is the spanning tree of this graph. So when it is a unweighted graph, it is pretty easy to find. Or, or rather, it's a very straightforward thing. But what if you have to find the spanning tree of a weighted graph such that this is an optimization problem where you're minimizing the weight, overall weight of the spanning tree. What do you mean by overall weight of the spanning tree? Some of the weights of the edges in the tree. So you're trying to minimize the sum of the weights in the tree. So I mean, the practical application sir has actually given, right? So if you want to light the fiber cables connecting many cities and you want to give a backup, okay? So you have, say, connection from Chennai to Mumbai, Mumbai to Delhi, Delhi to Kolkata, and back to Chennai. And then you have, say, connected to Bangalore, Hyderabad, all these places. But because there is so much of dependency on the internet these days, right? You want to give a parallel connection or rather a line which is, kind of running in parallel to the uh, existing cable or maybe on the other side of the road or something. So you, now this time you don't want to give it for every path, every edge in the graph. What you want to do is suppose some connection fails somewhere. There is still some other path that you can go through. But at the same time, it kind of reduces the cost of cabling. First, uh, you have an, one path which is actually like this. This is probably say Chennai and Mumbai or whatever, Delhi and Kolkata and all that, okay. So you have connected with once, but now I want to give a parallel route, which is something like a backup. At the same time, I don't want to spend as much as I've already spent. At the same time, giving some backup connectivity until the existing connection is restored. So for that, I will try to come up with this finality. For this, the consideration is the distance that I have to do the cabling. For that, I have to find the minimum spanning tree so that I spend minimum amount of so that there is minimum cost involved in coming up with a parallel cabling scheme. This is one simple motivation. There could be so many other things for finding the minimum spanning tree. Okay. Is this clear? Just a simple motivation. Okay. So in this graph, so there are two strategies that we use. Okay. One is we progressively build a tree. That is one approach, which is the Prince algorithm. So when I say progressively build a tree, which means that at every stage, you see whatever I have built from the graph, it is a tree. Whereas in the case of Kruskal's algorithm, I am not building it at, I mean, at every stage, if you look at the edges that I have added to the tree, it may not look like a tree. Only at the final step, it may have the, it could, it is possible that it could look like a tree, but it is not necessary. It can always look like, uh, you know, a, a different uh, an edges scattered here and there. And at some point, fi finally, when you've finished all the edges, right? So how many edges will be there in a tree? N minus one. Okay. N minus one. Exactly N minus one, right? Otherwise, it is not connected. You have N nodes and you want to connect them. It will have exactly N minus one edges. So by the time you finish the N minus one iterations, whatever, right? Finally, Kruskal's, it will be a tree. But intermediate steps, it may not really be a tree. Whereas the case of prims, if you look at every step, every step you keep adding edges, it will be a tree. Okay. So, so let us look the first few steps. I have only taken where the uh, main logic is there. Let us just take, see the initialization part of it. Okay. So here you are actually starting with This step you can see, right? This is the edges in that graph which I've just shown you. And here it is actually adding the in just the other direction because it's a undirected graph that you're working on. Then you have. So in the undirected graph, you are assuming that there is 
so okay a prince algorithm probably does not i mean i wouldn't say doesn't work really but it assumes that the graph is connected so what do you mean by the graph is connected there is connection from every vertex to every other vertex so in the directed graph that need not be the case right there could be certain vertices which are not reachable so prints generally may not work in the case of directed graphs because it, there is this underlying assumption because you keep adding in every time it is a tree and it is a connected component all the time right so every time that may not happen so in this case that we are looking at we are looking at an undirected graph okay so you have these edges which are added and you have just initialized so what does this list means right this list means this is the vertex i have okay and for that vertex whatever are the neighbors and what is the weight of that neighbor that is what this means i'm going to create a list for every vertex with its neighbors along with the weight of ij that is what this step means so the w list will actually contain for every node it will contain the list of its neighbors so it will be a two tuple a list of two tuples right so each tuple the first will be the neighbor the number of that neighbor comma the weight the dist weight of the edge that connects i and g okay this is a simple structure that you have to understand in this code now we come to the program so here again you are initializing in infinity so infinity here is the so here as compared to the shortest path you are actually adding the edge weights com by comparing the edge weights okay so i mean he, there also you are comparing the edge weight but there you are actually comparing the edge weight of the total path so there is a summation that happens right and that's why you looked at the longest path multiplied by the number of rows and then you added that as the infinity but here you are actually looking at the maximum weight for the for all the keys in that particular for all the keys for all the nodes what is the maximum weight edge that is what you are setting as infinity that weight plus 1 okay so what i mean is see in this given graph right for all the nodes you see all the neighbors and all the weights so here you can see 10 is the heaviest right so we will set 11 as the infinity okay is it okay fine okay so that is can the, the same thing like take the maximum distance and multiply it by rows yeah, yeah we can do that but you don't need such a big number is what i'm saying Okay, okay, but yeah. yeah, you might as well settle for a smaller one. That's it. Doesn't see if it is like big numbers, you know, it might be like one lakh or something like that. But you don't need that. You just need this. See, suppose you have this in connecting cities, right? So if you're going for thousand into thousand into and all that, mm -hmm. instead of that, all you need is the the distance between the maximum distance say, between Chennai and Delhi or something, right? So you'll just take that and uh, you take one plus that. That's that. That actually serves the purpose of infinity. Okay, yeah. So you have again just like the dextras and uh, the other one, you have these two dictionaries, which is visited and distance, and you're initializing false infinity. These are things that we've already done, and this is a list in which you're going to add these edges. Okay, the two tuples, which are like the edges that you're going to add to this list. Now. Uh, yeah okay so first you set the zero as true okay you're starting from zero right for that uh, all the neighbors of zero you're setting this distance is d and yeah because see you can take any vertex because you have to include every vertex in the graph right so you can actually start off with any vertex ideally because that vertex will definitely be part of the tree Correct. Every vertex has to be. So if you say, I can I take the other vertex? Can I take some other vertex? You can still do that. There is no problem. Okay. So, yeah. Now, this code is what I've copied there. We'll look at that. Okay. With this example. Okay. Mm, let me just reduce the size so that. So I'm not able to minimize. Okay, I okay. 
let us see now what do, what does your w list dot keys contain can anybody tell me from what the code i have shown you you had wl of i right wl of i and then each of this will contain the j comma d tuple right this is what was getting added to this so what does i all the vertices right all the vertices correct yeah so this is e this will be 0 to 5 right so i ranges from 0 to 5 okay now the minimum distance i am setting it to infinity because i have to update it i will compare with infinity and then if it is less i will update it right so first i am initializing the minimum distance to infinity then the next vertex is none all those are initial uh, uh, initializations okay so for u in list of keys again okay. 0 to 5 for vd in w list of so what are the neighbors so let us see what happens when u equal to 0 right so what is the vd pair here can anybody tell me what are the vd pair here Zero one zero three. That's not correct. No, v v is not uh, zero. What one is v? One four. One four yeah. two two. Right? So correct. U v is the edge. U v belongs to edge, and d is the weight of edge u v. Sorry, right? D is nothing but the weight of edge u v. That's what I said by j d. So if you have an edge from i to j, and d is the weight of that edge. Okay. So VD is nothing but the neighbor of U, whatever are the neighbors of U. So that is 1, 4 and 2, 2. Okay, so that is what this is. So first you are looking at 1, 4. If visited of U, so what is U? U is 0. So here we have actually initialized visited of 0 as true. Right? In this step we have just had, just to start, the first node is set as visited is true okay now because u is visited and not visited of v that neighbor is not visited which is a neighbor this neighbor one is not visited and d is less than minimum distance what is d d4 is less than infinity this is the this is the initialization right minimum distance is 4 what do i do minimum distance is d next v is v and next e is e now i'm going to Uh, yeah correct okay now i'm going to say my minimum distance is four okay minimum distance is four the next v is a one and the next e is zero comma one next iteration i'm coming to v comma d which is two comma two right i'm checking if visited is u u is visited yes and v is not visited so 2 is not visited right now d is less than what is d here 4 now right no no for the, the vd now that we are considering is 2 comma 2 right we already considered 1 4 yeah 2 yeah no, two. yeah 2 and minimum distance is what 4 yeah four, right? so this yeah. is 4 correct right? so now i've got a smaller distance so 2 is my new distance and by that it means next e is going to be 2 and the next edge is going to be sorry next e is going to be u comma v this is not 0 1 this should be 0, zero comma 2 okay. that means what am i going to do choosing the minimum minimum the max correct the minimum correct. Edge. and we are going to add to the list of three edges right we are starting from the minimum edge here. that's correct yes Okay, now I have, uh, I think there is some alignment issue here, right? Mm, just give me a second, okay? Yeah, so for I in keys, ah, that's fine, that's fine, okay. So now I keep doing this for uh, all the vertices, okay? So here I have, okay, words, what is the one? So u0 is over, right? Now u equal to 1. 
for u equal to 1, I will find the smallest neighbor. Right? So which is which is what? Before that, we have to add to the three edges, right? We have to come down. No, actually, the three yes. edge, uh, yeah, that is what I was thinking. But here because it is. We are, now we are uh, finished with the zero neighbor, so we are coming out of the. Corner. No, 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 no. So actually, what we are doing here is we are finding the minimum weight edge among all edges in the tree. Okay. okay. Smallest edge among all edges in the tree. That's what we are finding out. That is why we have this outer for loop. See, what happens when I come out of next E, now next E I have set it to 0, 2. But I am not adding it to the tree edge yet. I am again going to go to 1 and I am seeing all the closest neighbors. Now I have the next edge of U, next, this, this, is, this will get updated to 1, 2 because this is of weight minus 5. So this next E kind of gets overwritten with 1, 2. Okay. okay, that way I will keep iterating until I find the edge with the least weight among the full, all the nodes in the tree. Oh, sorry, all the edges in the tree. That edge is what I'm going to add to the tree. Got it, no? Okay. Yeah. Now, again, I'm going to 1 here. Starting from 1. Because I've just added one tree edge here, right? And now what have I done? I have set the next V. What is next V here? This is from 1. So I started from 1 and I found that 2 is a nearest edge. So next V is 2 and the next E is 1 comma 2. Right? Now for next V, I have actually set it to true. Now this one I am actually, actually going to set it to true. This is visited. I am setting it as true. Got it right now in the next iteration i'm coming in the next iteration which is for i equal to one so for u equal to 0 1 to 5 i have done i'm done i found the edge with the minimum weight so that is done now i'm going to come with i equal to one i'm going to again iterate through this whole thing and i'm seeing if visited of u so i am actually uh, yeah, so I'm actually I'm taking, I am looking at uh, 1, 1 is not visited and not visited of u. So that is not going to consider this edge anymore. Because I've already added to the tree and I'm not supposed to consider the edge 1, 2 anymore. That's why this condition not visited of 2. So in the next loop, as I said, now, so i equal to 1 comes. So u equal to 0 will be there, u equal to 1 will be there. When it comes to 1, I'm saying why 1, 2 gets excluded from the next iteration. It's because 2, we have now set it as visited. So therefore, when we consider the edge 1, 2, we see that visited. These both are visited. So this condition, this is not changed. There is nothing that happens. And then it will go with the next minimum weight edge. Are you able to get it? Yeah. Okay. So next minimum weight edge, say it could be 2, this one, or it could be this one. So right? here, the inner for loop also goes, the u also goes from 0 to 5. <coughs> yeah. And again, outer for loop also goes from 0 to 5, right? Correct. Every the first, first when this was 0, I found the minimum edge with the most minimum weight. Yeah. So by using this for loop. And 0 this to 5, loop. yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the when it became one again, I'm going through this, but now I'm going to find the second minimum edge. The third loop, I will find the third minimum edge. Yeah, got it right. Yeah. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yeah. In prims, right? Uh, it was that if you choose a vertex, then you have to choose its adjacent vertex, right? You cannot go, it has to be a connected, it starts with the smallest, like one vertex. and then It, it has to form a tree, right? That's what you mean. Yeah, yeah, it has to form a tree. Yeah, yeah. So let us see. That is why we are looking for only for the cases where there is an edge from you. I'll just tell you. Okay. So let us just do this hand running. Okay, then maybe take. So first iteration is clear, right? So let us see the next one. Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. May I ask yeah. a question? 
Yeah. So yeah. I here in this uh, very uh, first loop uh -huh. is not being used uh, anywhere, as I can see, right? No, so, it's just for running so that you know we get all the uh, minimum edges. That's it. So essentially, we are running n times, right? Because there yeah. are n n vertices, right? In general. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that is because we can. Uh, this is most, also n. This is also n. Right, right. So uh, this is because at most we can only have n minus one edges, edges, and that is why we are uh, kind of running only n times. So okay. n minus one times also, if we if we run the loop, that will also I think would work. Is that right? Mm. You mean the outer loop, right? The inner loop you cannot do, no, because you have to yes. see whatever is in yes, loop, yes. Outer the outer loop. loop only. Yeah. Like double list dot keys. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it should. Yeah, but because see, you are not uh, so it's not like you are not running it for for i equal to one to n. You are actually running it for the all the keys, right? So yeah, you can actually do it as for so, i in range. Uh, okay. Keys dot size or whatever, right? Okay, okay. I was just wondering whether it is like specifically using this dot keys is kind of required mm -hmm. here because it is not. No, no we are not using the i anywhere yeah, in yeah. the loop. So it's just exactly. the number of loops. But what I am what you are saying is. What if we use something like for uh, say k in range uh, w list dot keys dot size minus one or something? Minus. Right? That's okay. Yes, 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 exactly. Uh, that should work ideally. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. I'll try it and see once. Yeah, sure. Okay. Right, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, somebody was asking, how does this ensure it is a tree, right? Okay. So this is uh, zero. Sorry, one two, right? Now you want to go. So i equal to One right, I equal to one. Now you're going from yeah for uh, okay. So for again, you will range from zero to five, right? So again for uh, zero one, you will see whether it is the uh, next set or this one again. You will see for for whatever for zero, you will get the next one. If is this is none. Start up in next e. Now we are looking only for the neighbors of one, right? So it will be like one zero, one three, one two. Am I right for the? That is the first the... iteration of u. I'm sorry, second iteration of u. Yeah. So the question that somebody asked was, how do we ensure that this is a tree that we are building, like progressively yeah, building? Yeah, right? because that's why we are checking only for the neighbors, not away from one. So that it will form among these three, we are choosing only one. That's how the prims write. Yeah, that is correct. So, uh... so we cannot go further. We are checking only one zero, one two, one three. One two is visited. That's correct. So... What happens if you do two? See, this ranges from zero to five, right? So for zero, you are checking. For one, you are checking. All the neighbors of zero, you are checking. All the neighbors of one, you are checking. Then all the neighbors of two, you are checking. And you are actually updating next e based on that, and that is what you are appending to the tree. It should it should cannot have a disconnected component. It should continuously connect. Correct. Together. That's the yeah. that's the whole idea of prims, right? Yeah. Just give me a second. Not sure if I. So once the for loop that is, we are coming to visited of next week. Are we not doing that? Uh, you mean yeah, this one? This visited of next. This is what you mean? Yeah, I think because it is out of the for loop, and but still it is inner of the outer for loop. Is it not? That is correct. This is correct. So we see, suppose okay. Let us see. Let us see what we get here. Okay, here we have zero, one. So the ideally, what we will get is once we reach two, uh, right? So you have say two comma zero, but that edge it will not consider because two is also visited and zero is also visited, right? So mm. this two it does not add, I guess, right? Because your zero is visited and uh, two is also visited, so that does not. No, here. Okay, let me put it as u equal to two. And then from u, you are considering two comma zero, right? 
टू कॉमा वन टू कॉमा थ्री एंड टू कॉमा फोर राइट टू कॉमा जीरो यू विल नॉट कंसिडर बिकॉज दैट इज ऑलरेडी विजिटेड राइट एम आई करेक्ट या एंड वन Two comma one has minus five again, so it doesn't matter. This will again get updated as two comma one. What happens to two comma three? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Atul. Sorry, I'm, you're here. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, in the first iteration which you have uh, running for the for i in w list dot key, so for i equal to zero. Huh. So actually, only two edges will be considered. Uh, zero to one and zero to two. So out of these two edges, we will select the minimum. Zero to two, so this yeah, first this week correct, will correct. be selected. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. Zero to two will be selected, is it? Yes, zero to two as will be selected. Uh, so, uh, so if you see the condition uh, inside the second loop, so if visited you, so first we have said zero the, is visited. Uh, yeah, zero yeah, is zero visited. Yeah, zero we have marked as it true, but yeah. we are checking the second th side uh, not visited V. Yeah, one and two were yes. not visited. Yeah, one and two are not visited. Yeah, and D is less than or equal to uh, min dist. That's correct. Which so, is an infinity. So, so we got yeah. Yeah. So for the second loop, uh, this, this second loop for you in W list dot key. Uh -huh. So I think it will not run. Uh, so condition will not be satisfied for uh, another keys. So in the first iteration only. Ah, uh -huh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. so I, uh, I missed that. Sorry. So that visited of U is not satisfied because visited of U is now set only for zero. For one, two, three, four, five, for everything visited is still not correct. No, that's what you mean, Atul. See, yes, zero yes, to yes, one, yes. zero to five is there. For one, two, three, four, five, everything this visited of U is not correct. So from yeah, you you are correct. Got it, got it. Thank you. Yeah, that was the what I was missing. Okay, so for U, it will actually execute from zero to five. But when it reaches this statement, it will see that visited of zero alone is true. Instead of one, instead of two, three, four, five, everything is false. So it will not go inside. So here in this loop, it is actually setting the zero comma two. That's correct. Okay. So that is what is getting added to the tree, which is uh, yeah zero comma two. This is the edge that is added to the tree. Okay. So now let us see the next loop. So distance of v. Yeah, distance of v is actually the distance of. Okay, we'll come to that. But before that, we'll come to the tree. Just give me a second. Okay. So now we have again for i equal to two. Sorry, uh, I we just check for i equal to zero. Now we check for i equal to one. Okay. So for that case, again it will go from zero one. So here what happened is we have set two as visited, right? Now two is visited of. Two equal to true because this is the minimum distance is okay. So I I think I confused everyone. I'll just briefly explain it again. Just give me a second. Just do just do a hand run. Sorry. Instead of u was not true. Correct. So here you have i equal to zero, right? So the first time you have u equal to zero, then you have v comma d as zero, one, and zero two, right? So visited of u is true. Why? Because we have set here visited of zero as true here in the initialization. So visited of true is zero. Sorry, visited of zero is true. So it will go inside this if loop. Now minimum distance. What is min distance? Min distance is d, which is the distance between zero and one, which is four. Right. Now we have next v s one, next e s zero comma one. Correct. This is the next e. Next again, this for loop gets executed once again. Now the V D that we are considering, right? The V D. This is this V D we already considered. Now the next V D we will consider this again. Visited of U is zero, sorry, true, and not visited. Two is again not visited. So we come here again and we check whether the minimum distance. What is the minimum distance now? Four, and what is the distance uh, D? D is the distance which is zero comma 
2 comma 2 right this is the distance so now we said that minimum distance is 2 and next vertex is 2 and the next edge is 0 comma 2 now you see when u equal to 1 what happens right u equal to 1 what is the v comma d v comma d is 1 comma 0 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 these are the three edges what happens when you come to what happens when you come to this sentence right here the visited of one is still false so what is the only one for which we have set it to true this is the one that we have set it to true everything else is false right so this is what controls this okay so here it is still false for sorry for visited of one is what we are checking so visited of one is false I hope you have understood this. Why is this of one false? We have just set everything to false in the beginning, right? So we are not going inside this loop, right? Now again, it goes to two. For two also, this is false. So it does not come inside. For three, for every other vertex, this is false. And that's why it does not come inside. So now the tree edge that we have, which is the next E. Next, we have we, we have updated as zero, two. So that is a tree edge that we are appending, which is zero, two. Now consider the next I. Here again, what you're doing is u equal to, you're actually starting with u equal to 0. Now, if the keys, yeah, again, um, 0, 1 and not visited of v, okay? So, you are checking whether, again, 1 is not visited. So, without making the other vertex true, we can't enter, no, again, visited of v. Sorry? In the, even in the next iteration, if visit of u except 0 is not true, then how can we again iterate? Visited of 0 is 0. Visited of 0. Yeah, for the first iteration, visit of 0 is true, so we are able uh, to visit the neighbors. Correct. Now again, uh, for further movement, if nothing is made true, how can we go through? No, 2 is true, right? 2 we have set no, it as no, true. Starting in the first, no, we haven't. Right. No, we have actually selected 0, 2, right? So this one we yeah. have set it to 0, 2. This is the edge that we are adding. So next V, as I said, is 2. Correct? Next V is 2. And this next V, we actually set it to true before coming out of this, before okay. I becomes 1. So okay. that I think I did not set it here. That's why I got confused, right? This one. Correct? Okay. And Monday, initially, when it is uh, where it is done, uh, zero is true. This one, this uh, main code, I just kind of removed that. I started, I copied the code only from this so that we can see it in a single screen. Here, okay, the initialization okay. is done, visited of zero is true. This initialization right. part, yeah, this is done. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah okay. Okay, so. Mm, yeah, so this is true for two. Yeah, okay. Now we again come here. For u equal to 1, the visited is false, right? Visited of u is false. But it again starts from 0, right? So 0, 1. Sorry? Yes, ma'am. It will start from the 0 again. Yeah. yeah. Then so we will also consider the 0 to 1 as two. again. Correct. correct. The minimum. Yeah. yeah. So u equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So again, you are starting with 0. So this is visited. And uh, again, these two, like 0, 1 and 0, 2 are the V, T, right? So that 1 is not visited. So you will again, you will go to 1 and you will see whether the distance is less than minimum distance, which is correct because you have reset the minimum distance as infinity when you moved from I equal to 0 to I equal to 1. So now your new um, minimum distance, right? Minimum distance here in this loop, this is now again 4. Because you're considering the 0 and 1, right? So u equal to 0 and vd is 1 comma 4, right? That's what you're checking now. Correct. Right. This is what I said now. This is v, this is d, and this is the... Okay, I, I, I got it. 1 and 4. Okay, so this is the 1 and 4 here, right? So you're again coming inside and you're setting this to true. And you again go inside. But for 2, it is already visited. Right now, u equal to 2. 
sorry for vd which is earlier it was 0 comma 1 now it is 0 comma 2 so v is 2 v was earlier 1 here that is why we got the uh, distances for now it is 0 comma 2 which is the vd which is the neighbor of 0 which is the 2 vertex 2 so instead of u is definitely true and not visited of v is false because we have said this is here two right this we have set it as true so for two it does not go inside so now we have the edge which is zero one which gets added to the tree okay now again we go for the for loop go inside here so i equal to two here right now for u and again it starts from zero one two three four you check for 1, this is visited and 2 is also, 1 is visited. This is um, 2, uh, I mean for 1 and 2, it does not go to inside this because visited of 1 and 2. Okay, so we have add, added the 0, 1 here, right? So next V was 1 and because of that, we have said this is true. So this edge, sorry, this is now set to true because we have added this edge here, right? This edge is added so that this is also set as true. Now for uh, 0, it does not go inside at all because of 0 and 1 visited, 0 and 2 visited. 0 and sorry, zero and 1 visited and 0 and 2 visited. Okay. I will now erase the whole thing and show it for the next. Okay. Now you have i equal to 2. Right. For that again, you start. Okay. Sorry. i equal to 2, you checked with 0. Now you check with 1. So you are having 1 and what are the neighbors of 1? that are 1, 0, 1, 2, and 1, 3. So, so ma'am, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. In the second iteration, I think uh, this 2, 2, 1 as should, as should be selected. Yes, that's not yeah, ideally, that should be selected, but I am not sure why. Actually, uh, we are starting from the 0 index, 0 node. So, we will check for the 0, 1 edge because the 0 node is visited and uh, 1 is not visited. So, we will select this edge. And then we will consider that this is a minimum. Uh, after that, we will consider the node 2 because node uh, 2 because is, two uh, is visited. also visited here. Yeah. So here from we will check the adjacent of uh, 2. Got it. Got it. So here you Which can is 1 two. and uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, 1, it. 3 and 4. So all yeah. are connected. So 0, 1 we do not add before that. Okay. I'm... We ran it for 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? So for 0, we ran. For 1, uh, visited of you yeah, is one false. Is, that is one correct. is false. Yeah. So we will for not 2, it is visited is true. Right? Hmm. Inside, this is true. And not visited, whichever are there, that we will see, which is. So instead of 1, 0, we are going to consider 2, 0, 2, 1. 2, 3, and 2, 4, right? These are the ones that we consider because no, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0 will not be considered. Yeah, yeah because this uh, is not visited, this is not visited is false for this, right? Yeah. Two, so this one, we will two, not three, consider. Two, four. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, this is correct because uh, visited of 2 is correct, whereas visited of 1 is false. So this whole thing becomes true. So now minimum distance is what? So this is still in the earlier for loop itself. We have not gone here and reset it. We are in a case where we have we we had zero one. We had figured out that zero one has a smaller this thing, but our next v was one and minimum distance was four. Okay. Now when we are coming in the next iteration for the case of two, where u equal to two and v equal to one and d equal to minus five. This is the iteration that is happening here. Now because visited of two is true and not visited of one is true again because we visited of one is false right so that is again uh, set to true and then for minimum distance we are actually looking at minus five so we'll compare minus five less than four which is correct so minimum distance we update it as minus five then for next v what is the next v is this one one and next e is two comma one right so this is what gets added 
Yeah. And then is when we set the one as true. Right. This is the one that we are going to set as true. Correct. So this edge will get added to that. Is this correct, Adil? This is what happens. Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two, two, one will be selected for the yeah, next. Yeah, so this was a lot of confusion that I created mm. in running hand running. So I'm really sorry for that. I mean, it's uh, I mean that's why we have computer programs, right? Because when we do the hand running, we go wrong. Okay, and not justifying really, but really sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. So let us see which. Uh, okay, let us be more careful next time. Let us see which edge gets added. Okay, now we have two, three, right? Because this is still not over, right? For all the uh, neighbors. We have visited of two is true and not visited of three is again true because three is already false. But the minimum does not get updated because minus five is the smallest here, right? No, so after completion of this uh, loop two, one, two, three, two, four, then we will select the minimum uh, and then we will move to the next part of the code and then yeah, mark yeah, correct. is it true. Correct, correct. Because D is actually eight here, right? In the next yeah. iteration of this loop, right? This loop, so, not this yeah. loop, the, this inner innermost four loop. This will be two one first, then two three, mm -hmm. then two four, and yes, all of sir. these are false. So it will go inside if, but the thing is, minimum distance is still minus five. The two mm -hmm. one is still yes, the sir. minimum. Two three is eight, and two four is ten. So the minimum distance does not change. The next v does not change, and next e does not change, and that's why we have this edge. That is where we are adding this tree edge. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so for the iteration of two, we have seen all its neighbors and we are done with that. Now we look at three. What happens if we have three? So yeah, the set of u will be always false, right? Three will be false, so we can't enter right. Can we move to three? Uh, no, sorry. So no, but uh, we, we here the zero. Okay, so here we finished two, right? Sorry, yeah. u and for three, I'm telling you, visited of you cannot be. Ah, three, three, three false, this is right? false. Four, this is false. Five also false, right? Because of you, it's not correct. Correct, no? Huh. Now, when we come the next time, again, it is starting from you, right? For you, zero, both the neighbors are visited. But for one, both neighbors are not with. All the neighbors are not visited. And again, for two also, all neighbors are not visited. So we'll go inside this, right? Again. One first, right? Yeah, yeah. One is the one which is visited of you, correct? Yeah. So which is the one, one, yeah. Two, yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. So, two. so what I mean to say is that even though for three, four, five doesn't go again for i equal to next value, we'll go inside. Is what I meant. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I did not have to clarify that, but yes, that's what I meant. So for the next value of i, it will again go inside, and again it starts from for u equal to zero, one, two, three, four, five. For zero, both neighbors are visited, so for zero it will not go inside. For one. Only one neighbor is visited, so it will go inside for three. Is it correct? Can somebody correct me? Yeah, yeah. Wrong? yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, okay. yeah. So for one, uh, for three, it will go inside and it will see that this is not visited and it will check for D less than my. So again, <coughs> you know, minimum. Yeah. Somebody wants to say something? No, no, sorry. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So Again, you know that uh, what is the edge that you are considering? U equal to three, right? And what is v? Sorry, U equal to one. V equal to three, and D equal to five. The other case is V equal to two and D equal to minus five, which we will not consider because V is already visited. So V equal to three is the case that we will consider here, and D is five. So because we have come again here, right? So this infinity, so the distance, this min distance will now get updated as five. And uh, it will go through for all the neighbors of one. It has already gone through. Then it will go through for two. Again, two also, it has these neighbors, three and uh, four. So only this five we are going to take because these neighbors are not going to uh, help because this is the minimum. This is the five, right? So as I understand it, we will set this as true, right? Okay. So this is the tree, I think, will... Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, so far we have built this. So, yeah. So, can you tell me without going through the code, can you tell me which is the edge that will get added next? Three to two, right? This one will get added. Huh? Three to two, not three to two. What is three to? Three to four, sorry. Four, four, yeah. Then what is the edge that gets added? This one, right? Correct, no? So here the weight of the this thing will be here minus 5, 1, 2, 3 will be 5, 2, and 5. Okay? So the tree will have the edges 0, 2, 1, 2, or 2, 1, 2, right? Then So we have six nodes and five edges which are added here. Okay. One doubt because you said uh, yeah. we will visit all the nodes. When you visiting one to three, we are making three as true, right? Yeah. So uh, according to the code, if you go through all the again, like three two edges, right? We are visiting. We are in that uh, second for loop. Uh -huh. the new and verb list. Uh -huh. When we go true, will we not uh, again? Go three two or we are making in the only in the final stage of true right three. Um, no, here three is set to true, right? Only out out uh, when we are out of the for loop, right? Otherwise, out of again, this for loop, yeah, correct. Okay, that's when we are setting this three as true, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was when we added the one three edge to this. Yeah. That's when we set the 3 as true, right? Because, see, idea of setting it to true is from the next loop, that should be the point where, you know, I, I should be able to Starting enter the if loop because yeah. of that. But And I should explore the edge which I have not explored so far. That's the idea. Okay. Okay, so this will be the tree. Let me just run the code and see 0, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, 4, and 4, 5. Right? Mm. Let me just copy paste this thing. Zero two. Yeah, it should, it should be two so one. Uh, basically, uh, yeah, we're yeah. going uh, first visiting one node, mm. and we're exploring the neighbors. Among the neighbor, we're choosing one minimum. Am I right? That's how the code. That's how. That is why it is a connected component all the time. Because everything else is false, but that for loop is a little confusing because we're going through all the nodes. Yeah. So correct. In the it is a little confusing because we made it true. So theoretically, it's like we reach one node, explore the neighbors, and we choose the minimum cast. Yeah, and we are so adding to the three, right. three edges. Yeah, yes. That's how, but that for you in W list load keys is a little confusing as we are. Yeah, you're actually incrementally building the tree. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, the Boolean is actually controlling the whole thing, right? That visited Boolean array that or the Boolean mm -hmm. list that you have for each. Yes, node, right? That's visited what the dictionary is making a significant role, right? Uh, because of false yeah, only, we are dictionary, able to dictionary, correct, correct, yeah. The Boolean okay. value, right? That is what makes the difference. Okay, okay. So we can go only the neighbors of the uh, that particular node, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, that Which is we start with. Correct. Yeah. So that is like the whole idea. At all, I mean, I would say the difference between the prims and crystals, right? That's the main difference. Like you incrementally build the tree in the prims. At any point, you see whatever you have constructed, whatever edges you have added, will form a tree. Yeah, because you're starting from again zero, no? That is little confusing in the code. Correct, correct. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. theoretically, if you because see, u equal like, to zero to five. That's what you mean. Yeah, right? yeah. Because here you said uh, that is understandable. If we start yeah. from next week, we start from that particular next week. See, suppose you, you had something you, here, right? It should be covered, no? But that from should you, be covered in the initial stage when you visit to zero itself, right? So if at all there is oh, a what uh, you're saying is i equal to one case. Yeah, if at all, then why should we start from okay? 
yeah if at all there is age like you drawn now mm -hmm. then it would have been chosen among the three it would have chosen one so it right? should be something like wk minus i or whatever right i mean whatever you you put or whatever no, i you have explored yeah. that you put it there we understand but that point again and yeah. again you starting from zero i i don't know that's what I'm yeah yeah i understand but i'm not sure whether that is correct but uh, it looks correct i mean we still have to argue that it is correct right oh, oh, i think uh, we have to start from every time uh, we have zero to start from only. zero yeah because we have to check all the edges which are remaining to traverse which are remaining to uh, consider in the final tree because we are selecting the smallest edge okay so if any edge is remaining at the uh, intermediate level if that 0 to edge is minimum we will add that also that's what you're telling yes 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 so for example uh, in the first case if we select this uh, if we change this 0 to 1 edge to for example minus 6 Okay. Okay. This so one? in the first, which one? Zero to one, no? Uh, zero this to one, one minus six. So this one is minus six. Ah. Uh. Yes, minus six. Mm -hmm. So in the first situation, when we are selecting a, so we will select the. Okay, so move yeah, to minus six. We will select zero one, right? And the next yeah, then level, we will add the minus four. That's what I tell you. No, no. So oh, I have to change one more. So if we change zero to two, for example, minus seven. So can you change it? Yeah. Minus seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the first iteration, when we are uh, considering the zero uh, mm -hmm. node, so we will select the adjacent. Node. Yeah. So we will select this zero to two edge. Correct. Okay. In the in the next iteration, so once again we will start from the zero. Okay. So zero to one edge we will consider that we will compare the adjacent of two. So minus six we are considering this is a minimum distance. Then we will compare minus five, eight, and ten. So which is the minimum? Minus six. Okay, okay. So, so uh, yeah. So uh, I think what uh, Atul is saying okay. is, uh, this two nodes will get added to the tree, right? Oh, sorry, these yes. two edges are going to get added to the tree. Yes. Yeah, so we have to check then, uh, all the previous edge which is not considered in the final tree every time for see, for, for selecting the minimum. This is not yeah. the tree that is going to get built. It is actually this tree mm -hmm. that is going to get built. For that, yes, you yes. need to consider zero also in the yeah. next loop. Is what Atul is saying. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Got it. Because the second highest could be coming from the origin uh, earlier node. Yeah, itself, yeah. Right. So that, that second level again, we can that may got be it. the smallest one, right? Yeah. Got it. Got it. Because we are already added, we can add. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the idea, I mean, I hope you got the point of Prims. It's basically building the tree. Incrementally, but every stage being this connected thing. So that is the core difference. Both of these algorithms have the same, almost the same running time and everything. But I mean, basic using different data structures, you can find mild, mild, minor differences. But ideally, you know, the key distinction that you have to make between these two algorithms is one is the cross curls. If you see, you can see kind of a forest. When when I say forest, it is like different connected components staying in different places. And final step, you will see this full tree. Okay, so we'll go to the crascals. I think we have, we still have some time. Yeah. So I hope you just saw that we have compared uh, whatever we got from the code, this code, and what we got from here. Okay, so this is just some simple comparison. So I know I kind of messed up the hand running because it's definitely as uh, somebody pointed out, it's starting from the beginning zero and then it's kind of very confusing. So unless I had practiced it well enough, rehearsed it well enough for this, you know, probably I mean, it was likely to be messed up and I'm really sorry about it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Ma'am, uh, I have a doubt in... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If uh, zero to one, if it is two, weight is two, then how this algorithm will take because both the from initial state it can just one, take zero to two right it'll just take zero to two because uh, if, if zero to one is two uh, no sorry no it, it does not take zero to two because you are actually doing a d strictly less than min distance right this is the crucial thing here if both are same then it will check whether it is strictly less than the minimum distance if not it does not update so it has already taken zero to one so what you're saying is this is two right this is what you mean yeah yeah am i getting your question correct right man right yeah okay so what you're doing is you are actually going in that uh, list order right so you have added b comma ds 
all those edges and everything. So if you are considered 0, 1 first and you've added that to the tree, next time you're coming, the D is again 2 and the min distance is also 2, right? So if this was strictly less than, so suppose you had given D less than or equal to min distance, then this would have gotten updated with 0, 2. So first, uh, whatever we have find it first, it will, will go as per the correct, first. Correct, correct. The first node that we find, yeah. Yeah. That's it, no? Shall I go to press press? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think I have to take the code. Sorry, just give me a second. I'll just show the initialization part of it. Okay. The same thing what we have done there, we have added the edges in the opposite direction because it's again on the other side when you have initialized the dictionary and for each entry in that you are actually appending i mean you are adding the neighbor with the weight that's all what you're doing here and then you come to the response okay so here as you can see yeah somebody wants to ask something yeah just one doubt uh, yeah. in prims how do we make sure the tree is not forming cycle it is because of the visited visited correct correct that takes care of the cycle yes correct See, if two nodes are there and the third node is visited, right, then it will yeah. not go that side at all. So that is taken take care of the cycle. Correct. All the neighbors, see, it has, say, three neighbors, I mean, two neighbors. And yeah, one neighbor is already visited. Yeah. The other neighbor, you mark it as true. And then if you check for both these, whatever are the two visited neighbors, it does not we won't consider end. it okay. at all. Yeah. Okay. Only the unvisited okay. neighbors it is considering, yes. Okay. Thanks. So incrementally building the tree by that I mean like you keep adding edges until you ensure that I mean and by I me mean, all the while ensuring that it does not form a cycle. Yeah. Yes. Not, yeah. And that is ensured by the uh, yeah. So here uh, again the same not the same thing it's different. So as you can see this component uh, dictionary right. So this is kind of what I told you about like this is incrementally building the tree by adding components to uh, uh, the whole, uh, what do you say, the, the output is actually, you know, the edges which are coming from these different components. So we'll see as we go, okay. So you're actually getting the same list here, okay. And uh, edges is the list and the component is a dictionary and uh, T is again a list that you have three edges, okay. So yeah, you have a for loop here, let us see for what, what you're doing by this, you're initializing and saying that for every, uh, one second. Okay. Yeah. So what you're do, going to do is, yeah, it's clearly given, right? So what you're going to do is instead of the U comma V comma D that we had, now we have, so in the edges input that we had, right? What did we have? Edges input, you had, this is U, this is V and this is D, right? So because just to enable our sorting, easy sorting of based on the 
edge weight. So here, what we are going to do is, you're going to pick the least weighted edge, then the next least weighted edge, whichever it is, and then you keep adding it until it forms a cycle. Okay, so you keep picking in the incremental or in the in the increasing order of the minimum weight edges. So that's why we are going to sort the edges based on the weight for that we are making this as the first component. Okay. And what does this component dictionary do? The component dictionary, it will have for every component. So I'm actually going to have a, say for instance, so component of zero. I'm going to initialize it zero. For one, I'm going to initialize it one. And the moment I add it to the component, I, I'm adding this edge, right? I will add one to this component component of zero or i will i will add, i will update the component of one as zero i'll come to that when we do an example it will be complete okay so first before we starting we are saying all of these are like individual components okay and then as we build the tree we'll have different components added. okay so this is the first one okay if component of you uh, to ensure that it doesn't form a cycle right that is why the component is here because uh, no, component, component doesn't ensure a cycle. I mean, doesn't uh, ensure avoiding the cycle. Actually, component is you keep building it until everything is now a single component. Okay. Right? The whole tree now has to become a single component, right? Yeah. So once you reach a stage in this for loop, right? Sorry. Uh, once you reach a stage in this for loop where now, for every u comma v that you have, right, this is not equal to this. Sorry, is equal to this. So every component is now one component means then there is nothing to execute in the for loop. Okay. Okay. So this component is not equal to this component of u not equal to component. Both of them are in different components. So now because all of these are in different component, right? So for First, we will consider this 0, 1, sorry, 4, 0, 1. Okay, this is the first edge. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. First edge, we have sorted the edges. Right, so which is the first edge that you have? Can you tell me? What is the first DUV that we look at? 0 to 2. No. Mm, no, we are actually sorting by the edges, right? Sorry, the edges we have sorted based on the weight, no? Weight is 2, no? There is 2. two. Okay, minus 5. Right. Ah, correct. Minus 5, 1, 2, right? This will be the first one, no? Is it correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, now I see that this component, I'm checking whether both of them belong to the same component. Okay, so I think what you the other person asked, like whether it is ensuring cycle or not, right? Got it. Yeah, I, I understand what you're talking about, right? Yeah. It, it um, and we'll see how it avoids the cycle. Yeah, got it. Okay. So now the three edges we have u comma v. So we add v comma v. So what does this mean? We are adding the least weighted edge here, right? This is what we are adding here. And then c equal to component of u. What is component of u? Component of u is one. Com yeah, C, C is now 1 because component of 1 is 1, right? So C is now set to 1. Now for W and W list of keys, if component of W equal to C, then component of W equal to component of V. So what is this statement doing? For all the components that are in 1, right? We are setting it as a same component as that of second one which is two so we are actually moving all the components now to component two let us see what happens so let us see in the case of one what happens for w and w list of key. so component of w is what say zero zero is zero which is not equal to one one is one so we have c equal to one now component of one is so equal to good story for sorry. w now can you repeat it sorry i'm not getting that yeah, yeah, so what is W equal to? Zero, now one. Zero. Yeah. This one only, right? For all these values, it will execute, right? Now I'm checking component of 
Z W whether it is one. This is the component of the okay yeah first got, node which is yeah. one right. Yeah. I'm checking whether it is the component of the first node. If it is not, I don't go inside. If it is the same component, then okay. I'm going to make it as the same component as is that of the next other end of that vertex. Sorry, other end of that edge, which is the one two that we are adding, right? So for so now component, the component of two also become one. That's what it is, right? You know, component of one becomes two, right? That's what it becomes. No? Okay. Either way, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what it becomes. See, because W is one, okay, and then component of W equal to C becomes true. This condition becomes true when we are looking at W equal to one. So okay. now W is set as component of B, which is two. So now component of one becomes two. So now this is a component, and it has number two. Okay. okay. Now we look at the next edge. Okay. And could you explain it again? Because W at zero, if W of component of zero is not equal to C, no? C is equal to one. Yeah. So it doesn't go inside. It only goes inside for W equal to one. Because see, this is the edge that I've added to the tree, right? So this is the edge that I've added to the tree, right? One and two. This is now one component. Earlier, this was in component one. This was in component two. Now I want to make both of them as the same component because it's a new component that is created, right? Right. Yeah. So for that, I am actually setting the component number of this also to two. That's what I said. This whole thing becomes a component. That is what is shown here. Uh, how will it become two? What is C value? C is equal to component of U, right? Yeah, U is one. No? Yeah, so C will be one, right? C is one. Yeah. So we are checking common W is equal to one, and we are making this to okay. And then we are setting the uh, component of W as component of V. Okay. Not we are not setting the component of V as C. We are setting component of W as component yeah. of V. Got yeah. it? Right? You so, thought the other way, right? That we are setting component yeah, yeah. of V as C. C. Yeah. I thought we are going with the C. Yeah. Uh -huh, no, okay. we are going the other way. Yeah. Okay. So now that is the first edge that we have in the sorted list, which is the next edge. It could be either two or this two, right? Okay, so let us see whether it is zero, two, two, right? I'm not sure how the tie is broken here, broken here. Because we have two edges which satisfy this, right? The uh, three, four, and two, correct? No? Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. 2 comma 0 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 comma 4. Both of them will be there, right? Yeah. So let's just go by one of those. Okay. So now you check component. So what is so I'm just taking this one. So u equal to 0 and v equal to 2 and d equal to 2. Okay. So what is component of u? It is 0. This is not equal to component of 2. Component of v 2 is again 2 only. So T, T, you are going to append UV, which is 0, 2. So now you had Z, 1 and 2, to which you are going to add the 0, right? This is added, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, C equal to component of U, which is, uh, this is 0, right? Yeah. Now for W in list of keys, you will check whether W is Z, C. So for 0, it will check it is 0. That is correct, no? Component of 0 is 0 only, right? Which is the yeah. value of current value of C. So now the component of 0 becomes what? 2, right? Okay. So this whole thing, right? Yeah. Now becomes 2. Got it, right? Yeah. Again, we go to the next. Next is this 2, 3, 4, right? Next is the other two, three, four is the next edge. Let me see how it builds. So we have two, three, comma four, correct? This edge is what I'm talking about. This edge. Okay. Is it correct? Um, 
Oh, first one is the weight, no? Okay, yeah. Okay. AI. First one is the weight, so yeah. this AI, because it's kind of order is changed, right? So, yeah, component of U is 3. So, this is now 3 and this is 4. Both of them are different components, so that is different. So, you're going to add 3, 4. See, now this is a different component that you have. See, that is not attached to this. So, what will be the number? C is component of U, which is 3. And W, which is component 3, will now get updated as component of 3 is getting updated as component of 4. One second. For this, what are we doing? For W and W list dot threes, we are going through the... Three, 0 to 5. X of 3, right? But for this particular. No, no. No, it is all the vertices, right? Okay. For all the vertices, we are checking. Okay. For any vertex which belongs to the component 3, which was earlier belonging to component 3, we move it to component 4. Okay. So this now we have as a component and this is number 4. Okay. Now we again go back here. Let us see which is the next edge. So this is the component. So, which is the next edge? Let us see. So we have uh, 0, 1, and 4, right? So, this is interesting. 4, 0, 1, correct? This is the next weighted edge, no? We, have, we are done with this. Let me just see. We are done with this edge. We are done with uh, 1 to one. 2 we have added. Yeah, this also we have added, right? Now, minus 5 is over, 2 is over, 2 is over. So, the next highest is 4, right? That's yeah. we have to consider, no? So this 401 is the next stage. So we are checking in the, just give me a second. So component of U, which is, what is a component of 0 now? Yeah, component of 0 is 2. One and component of 1 is also 2. Yeah. This is what ensures there is no cycle. Yeah, you are cycle. very much right here. So this is what decides what is it. I mean, this, this, this is what avoids the cycle. Okay, so we will not add the edge. So we don't go inside at all, right? So this is not, we are not adding the edge to the T. Yeah. So this edge we are totally skipping. Okay, that's that. Okay, now we have next one which is, um, okay, we have two here, right? So we'll consider the first one which is, uh, five comma one comma three, right? Component of U which is one, Okay, this is 2. So this is 2 and component of 3 is 4. So this is not different. So you are now going to add the edge 1, 3. Okay. Correct, no? Is this correct? Uh, sorry. Yeah, correct. correct, correct. Yeah, this is of length 5. 1, 2 is minus 5. 0, 2 is 2. 3, 4 is 2. Yeah. Now... Okay, now I have to change the component of which one. So, 1, 3 is what I have added. C is the component of U. So, C equal to 2, right? And component of W, which is, if that is C, so, whatever are the components, okay, so that will be, W will be 0, 1, 2, what satisfies this condition, right? Because all 0, 1, 2, all of them have, C as 0, I mean the component as 2, right? Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. Now we set the component of all of them to component of 3, which is 4. So now this full thing, right? This full thing, it will become. Yeah, this full thing will become one component. What will be the number? 4, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So. So that's what uh, get here. Now you again go back. So 5, 1, 3 is over. Right. Now you have uh, another one which is 5, this one. Right. This is what you have to consider now. So which is uh, 5, 4, 5. Correct. You're coming inside. What is U is 4. Component of U. What is component of U is again 4. Component of 5 is 5. Right. So this is again not equal. So you add the edge 4, 5. 
okay and the component of c is component of u which is okay so this component of four yeah but everything will get now get set to five right so this whole thing will now become five component five right so now we have another edge which is three five so where does it fail you see that both component in five have the same yeah. component number so it does not go inside the seat loop and this stops expression okay so sorry this 2 3 also will be there because the 8 comma 2 comma 3 but because again 2 and 3 belong to the same component 5 that that again will not consider for the solve i mean that's clear right whatever are there in the same component it it does not go inside the seat loop so basically all the other three edges whatever are remaining this edge this edge and this edge all of them belong to the same component so the if statement does not get executed and it is complete Okay, so now let us see what are the edges: zero, two, one, two, one, three, three, four, and four, five. Right. So I think this is the same that we got for prims also, right? Zero, two, one, two, one, three, three, four. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that it will always. We get the same tree, okay? It is not at all necessary in this case. It just happened to be that both of them is the same tree, but it is not necessary that it will create the same tree at all. As I told you, like in the case of spanning tree without weights, I showed you, right? One tree itself can have. I showed somewhere. I remember, right? I mean, when I started off, yeah. So one one uh, given graph itself can have multiple spanning trees, right? This is what I showed. so this can have this spanning graph or this can have this spanning graph right and this is so 0 1 2 right so you have 0 1 2 3 and you can have 2 1 so the same uh, graph can have different spanning trees same way for the weighted version also whenever there are edges with same weight right especially these cases this two where we simply bro broke the tie assuming that no one will come up before the other This also so it based on that both of them could end up with a different spanning tree, but the cost of the spanning tree will be the same for both. Irrespective of whichever spanning tree it comes with, the spanning tree if you run it the same graph you run it for both algorithms, the cost of the minimum spanning tree will be the same for both. The tree may be different, but the cost will be the same. Tree also we get. Uh, numbers because when we have same weights only in that case we get many yes numbers. otherwise otherwise if the otherwise weights are unique, unique then yeah yeah it will be unique right yeah yeah correct okay so uh let me just see so other comparison so clearly the o of n squared is very clear with respect to the prims right because you are going through it this out, outside for loop and that inside for loop no that's all that is a confusion and of this one this is the code that we looked yeah there is this for loop okay let me just try to show you this in inside for loop and this for loop uh but you have a for v in w list of Okay, so that should add to the complexity, right? Let's see, if this is a different implementation. But the uh, uh, the running complexity is actually O of n squared. Maybe this particular implementation, I'm not sure why. Uh, no, but even for this, you will okay. So this is because see, in the case of dijkstra's, right? This Minimization, whatever is the next d, next v, etc. This we took it in consecutive, like this is O of n, this is O of n, and this was O of m, right? So O of n plus O of n plus O of m with an O of n outside, right? This is what was happening in this. This is what is happening. So here this will be like O of n, O of n, right? But um. No, sorry, but this should still be for n cube. Huh? Okay, 
complexity should be n cube. I'm getting it as O n squared. Mm. This I will check and let you know uh, in the live coding session. I'll just give some inputs on that. Okay, I have to check why this is open squared. So when we check it in on a, in a, in, a, in the first outset, it looks to me like it should be O of m n, not O of uh, n squared. Okay, because this is a four. Uh, oh, okay, okay, sorry, but this is it's not inner, right? Both this is O of n only, right? This is not the edge, no. I assumed it's a UV, right? So in that case, so we have to consider one for loop and the other for loop, right? But this is the weight, comma d. It is not the edge actually. So this so, is. So, ma'am, line number thirteen and fourteen actually it is creating a order of n squares. So, you if you can see that the uh, line number thirteen, it is running. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I have written O of n, right? This is O of n. Yes. This is so o of n, inside right? this loop, and we are also running o, o of n. This is O of n only. I got confused because this V of d, I took it as U V. If you are taking U V in the edge set, right? Then it will be O of m, no? That is what I computed as O of m, which is wrong. You got it right. This v comma d is actually not the edge. It is no, no, no. I'm not v. talking about the lower one. I'm talking about the line number thirteen and fourteen. Yeah, that is O of n. That is clear. Right? No, no, this that is, is O n square. Oh, this is O n square. Because we are running inside, so we are actually using the. No, no. For this loop. is O of n. There is one O of n outside. There is two one yes. O of n inside. So we have an O of n square. That yes. is fine. So this is the maximum. My, yeah. No, no. My doubt was. I thought this is an edge. In that case, this O of n plus this O of n plus this would have been a O of m, which is not what the case is, because this is only a vertex. So this is only O of n. It is not O of m because this is not an edge. It is correct only. Mm -hmm. O of n squared is correct. Hmm. You, yeah. So this is V D in W list. So here we are just checking for the, the edges neighbor, and neighbor only. Yeah, neighbors correct. only. Yeah, yeah. So, so see, yeah, I mean, so I, I, I totally edge. confused because I thought it would be something like four of U V in the edge set, right? In this case, this would have been an O of M, right? It is so actually not for the all edges. Actually, we are not running for the no, all edges. No, I understand. Here. So this is only the neighbor, right? So this yeah, is almost like O of, of N point. only. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So this is that side. So O of N squared, but. Uh, how about this? Uh, sorry, this implementation of prims. <coughs> this implementation of prims also is same only, right? Yeah. So if we are using the open, if yeah. we are using the link list, uh, no, no. If we are using the adjacency list, then I think uh, complexity uh, order of n plus m. No, no, n into m. I think opposite. Check. No, it is given as O of n squared only, right? Both are linked yeah. list only, no? There is no... Both okay. are linked list, right? It's just two different implementations, I think. Both are linked list, just different implementations, that's it. Here, the next is actually calculated inside this Eve, right? Here, the next visited, next node to be visited is all calculated here. This is prim list, okay. Both are prim only. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's O of n squared only. It is very clear. I confused it. That's it. It's O of n squared. In the it's previous squared. one, for okay, so in this list, this is also O of n and O of n. So you get an O of n squared. One for loop within the other, right? So you get a O of n squared. That's it. Uh, okay. okay, anyway, I think there is, I'm, I'm confusing it unnecessarily. In this case, it is O of n squared. This is not O of n squared. Okay. This is not O of n squared. This is O of n. That is why the complexity is not given here. So, yeah, complexity is, uh, it's I think it is uh, M, into N. N. M into N. Yeah, yeah. Actually, see, this is one for loop, this is one for loop, and here you have another for loop, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, actually, this overall loop is representing to the number of edges. Here we are traversing all the edge. This one is what you're saying. This is O of M, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, for you, yes. for every neighbor. So this is the edge, right? So this is O of yes. M. So it will be O of M. Right? That's what you mean, no? This is the for loop, V comma D. Sorry? Another third for loop also is there, right? V comma yeah, D. That's what. So this is actually one vertex, and you're looking at the neighbor of that vertex, right? So you're, you are plotting this only for all the edges. 
not for every pair of uh, vertices right you are not running it for every u comma v you are only running it for those u comma v which are edges okay that's why we are putting it as overfill correct but here this pre processing step no this is actually reducing that i think this is overfill and uh, here it is i think this will be overfill squared only it's given as overfill squared see so this implementation gives an overfill squared the other one gives overfill net yeah i think that is correct okay for crascals yeah so this is uh, o of m again order of this should be o of m i think this should be o of m only right uh, o of n squared is written now we initializing somewhere So for the first three line number three four five, if you check this. No, actually I am seeing more actually here. W in W list dot keys, right? So there is an O of M here, which is the edges, and then there is an N. So I'm not sure how it is. I don't know if it's an amortized analysis or anything. I'll just check anyway. So I don't think there is no point. Correct, no, Atul. You can just see this, right? You have a yeah. yeah this exactly. this is an edges. This is edges O of M, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. And there is one another which is O of N. Mm -hmm. So I think we can also represent M into N. Uh, uh, but here we have shown it as O of N squared. So I'm thinking there might be some other analysis which is involved. Yeah, so we'll N square that. is creating yeah. from the line number three, four, five. If you see that uh, we are running. One loop inside the outer loop. Ah, this four and this four, right? Yes, yes. N squared, O of N squared, right? Mm -hmm. But I cannot understand why this. So O of N squared is definitely better than O of M N, right? So if you say O of N squared, then this is not correct. O of M N analysis is not correct. Mm -hmm. Correct, no? Yeah. So if we are representing the complexity in only terms of number of vertices, then we can represent order of n. But square. even then, this will be of n cube, right? If m is no, 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 m is of order n squared, right? Which one? Sorry. No, m in general, m is of order n squared, no. Uh, number of edges. Edges, yeah. M is the number of edges, yeah. It is an order no, of. It n can square. be less than. It can be less, but. The upper bound, like O of n, when you are expressing m in terms of this thing, mm -hmm. you will say that is O of n squared, and there is another O of n in inside. That is what was confusing for me. See, suppose yeah, how do you write in this? The lecture, is, yeah, in yeah. the lecture, sir is representing in the terms of number of vertex. I have to check this. No, but even then, it will then in that case it will be something like O of n cube or O of m n. So something, I, I mean, I may be missing something. We have to again go back to the lecture and see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So, so what was the other point which I wanted to mention? Um, yeah. So in this week, so just to conclude, okay, whatever we have been studying, just to conclude, uh, uh, sorting. Do we come? Uh, so sorting, we can say it is n log n, no, Afna. Assuming that it is the Best algorithm that possible, right? So we can take it, in, and that is not inside a for loop, right? That's actually outside. So possibly, yeah. Maybe uh, I have to check. Maybe I'm missing something very minor. But yeah. So as concluding remarks, what I want to tell you is, so even though this week we were just looking at certain algorithms which are related to graphs, we looked at something which is called the greedy strategy, which is to, just told you about, right? So even for prims, if you see, we are kind of using a greedy strategy. You are looking at the neighbors. You are picking the one which is smallest and all that, right? So that is. Then the case of uh, the Floyd Warshall, right? That is actually using a very clever strategy. So you have this, as I told you, this overlapping subproblems is what we call them. To compute a, a the solution to a certain problem, you are looking at two smaller subproblems, or rather, the optimal solutions to a sol smaller subproblem. And those subproblems may be overlapping. So what happens is you do not have to recompute 
say i told you if you want to go from say 2 to 3 you can go via 2 to 1 and 1 to 3 and 1 to 3 possibly you have computed earlier and uh, for 2 to 4 also the same sorry 2 to uh, 5 to 3 also the same thing possibly maybe 5 to 1 and 1 to 3 so 1 to 3 you've already computed at some point so you can actually reuse it for computing for 2 to 3 5 to 3 4 to 3 or whatever wherever this one is as an intermediate vertex you've already computed and you've kept it so these kind of things like you know these are like standard very standard programming paradigms which we refer to as like the dynamic programming and the greedy that i've already shown to you right i mean the the crust sorry the uh, diextras and the prims and all those things they kind of make use of the greedy strategy so finally rather than looking deep inside these algorithms you should get a broad idea about how these algorithms are working the paradigms that are involved this will actually give you an overall per so you are given a problem and you try to identify okay what is likely to work for this problem will a greedy strategy work or will it something like does it can i can i divide it into smaller sub problems and then combine it together and put it into the solution for a bigger sub problem right so for that can I, so can, that is what the DP, I mean, the names are all kind of probably not relevant at dynamic programming, then that's possibly a misnomer. I don't know why the name dynamic programming has been. I've heard that the Ford who came up with this had to hide the, the, I mean, the strategy from someone and he named it something totally different. All those stories have had. But yeah, apart from that, what you have to keep in perspective is you are given a problem only, right? When you are when you go for some coding operations or when you are given a problem to implement whenever you're starting to work, ideally you have nothing in your hand. You don't know whether greedy works for this, whether dynamic programming works for this, whether something else works for this, right? But the idea of introducing these paradigms is just to make you aware, right? So the moment somebody says programming, the first thing that comes to your mind is starting from def, writing a Python function, then writing the main function, everything. No. Then you're given a really hard problem to solve. Say, for instance, the coding challenges, right? You have to come up with a pseudocode first. That pseudocode comes with your experience in working on these kind of uh, strategies and paradigms that you use to solve different kind of problems. So that perspective you should not lose is what I'm saying. When you are kind of trying to get the solution for the programming questions, when you're trying to work out the, you know, uh, you're, you're trying to solve certain things, don't lose the overall perspective. You're trying to come up with something that solves this problem in the most efficient manner possible. And the very first session when I started off, I said the relevance of the proofness of correct, proof of correctness, right? It is very important. You have come up with a solution. And we have seen many people posting, right? Work for three test cases, right? work for five test cases. If it doesn't work for five test cases, how do you ensure that it will work for a graph which is one million nodes, right? So those things you should not lose perspective. That's the whole idea of learning it in algorithms course. Keep all these things in mind. Just so as soon as you hear the problem, don't start coding. Think about what works better. And even in exams or OPP or whatever, right? We may not tell you like, okay, this is a greedy strategy that you have used. This is a DP strategy that you... Certain times it might suddenly occur to you, okay, this will work. Slow. Certain times you will have to put in a little bit of effort. And sometimes both will work. Both paradigms will work for certain problems. That's also possible. And both of them might have quite comparable performance also. In that case, either is okay. But there are very certain, very, you know, specific cases where one does not work at all. And there is something called as a Metroid structure and all the, the problems which have this Metroid structure, the greedy strategy generally works. And for the dynamic programming, you should have overlapping sub problems so that the dynamic programming becomes very effective and all those things will, I mean, we'll commit in more detail when we look at it in the later weeks. Okay. So just, just so that you don't lose the perspective, just so that, you know, you don't, get too much involved in coding that you lose the bigger uh, vision or the, the bird's eye perspective of whatever is happening on top, right? So just wanted to, uh, yeah, conclude uh, conclude that uh, this particular session. Okay. Yeah. So next, uh, the next session we have on uh, tomorrow, 8 to 10 p.m., the live coding. Okay. Live coding session. So ma'am, uh, actually, I want to add something. Yeah, So yeah, actually, sure. today's session is clashing with the med, med one session. So maybe I have to change, change this. So I'll update. I will send the uh, tomorrow session. Tomorrow session. Uh, it's classes with the med one session. Oh, so eight to ten. Okay, yes. okay. So maybe I have to ch change this. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we can confirm it after that. Then. Yes. And regarding the complexity thing, ma'am, uh, crystal and prints uh, actually it is not depend on the number of edges because we we are selecting n minus one edge in the tree. The, uh, 
So finally, in the oh, tree, actually, we will okay, get that the is the uh, that is the amortized analysis, right? I mean, yes, even though yes. if you look at the for loop, you will see that you are looking at edge wise, but mm -hmm. it is actually not because overall you are only going to look at the n minus one edges, right? Yeah, we will enter only n minus one s uh, one times uh, in, inside the inner got loop. It, got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So because of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Sure. So thank you everyone. Thank you for staying. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So Atil, I hope the okay, I'll just stop the streaming. Mm -hmm. I hope the streaming was working today.